So I just spent the morning with Josh Allen Friedman, the author. He's 10 years older than me. And uh, when I talk to him, I, I really get him. I identify with him. I, I feel like we've walked a similar career path. And I kind of feel like things he's talking about in his life today, that's going to be me in 10 years. So I'm reading his book, Tell the Truth Until They Bleed. I'm reading the chapter, Mr. Nobody. It's about his uh, romance with Ronnie Spector back in about 1975. She was 10 years older than him at the time. And uh, I just got done watching the movie Mad Max, which came out in Australia in 1979 which I didn't get to see until I was at UCLA in the fall of 1988. Here's an Australian film festival at UCLA and uh, I asked this girl, Sung. She was tall and funny, Asian, and uh, I'm sure she was majoring in biochem, planning a career in medicine. And uh, she was a friend of my roommates who was Vietnamese. And I cried at quite an Asian crush that year. Really had the yellow fever bad. I really liked Asians. They seemed so nice, polite, kind of traditional, attached to their family, hardworking. I'm talking about the Asians who were not born and raised in America, but immigrated here. And I, met, I admired how they kind of pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. They'd come here after floating on a, on a raft for for, for days like my roommate was a refugee, one of the Vietnamese boat people. And uh, fall of 1989, that was fall of 1988, that was a big time for me. I was 22. I just transferred to UCLA and I'd come down to UCLA a month early before classes started to see a doctor, an endocrinologist in Santa Ana, Dr. Norman Beals. And uh, for about six months, I'd been crippled by this mysterious virus or something that was just like held me in a vice, and I couldn't really exert myself without getting sick. For six months, I'd been ill, and uh, hoped that this doctor could make me well. So I had a lot of hope. The fall, 1988, when I was at UCLA, like hopes, in the sense that I could achieve them, that I haven't had since then. So that was kind of like. That was the last gasp of my youth. Fall of 1988, that was the last gasp of my youth. Right there. And uh, I'd taken a job at the magazine desk at the University Research Library. And uh, I got to meet a lot of girls that way. And I remember there was this one olive-skinned girl. I think she, she was French or something. and She wore kind of very minimal clothing, a very loose top, and I could see right down inside of it. She wore this string around her wrist, and she liked my accent. We talked so easily. I asked her for a phone number, and she gave it to me. I thought I could totally nail this girl. I'd never been with anyone like her. I'd never really been with a big city girl. I'd always grown up and lived my life in small country areas. And she was exotic and olive-skinned, and she seemed fast and funny. And I wanted to fly up there at those heights where she was flying. I wanted to fly up there with her. And I thought if I could only build up my strength, I'll call her and ask her out. And I never did build up my strength that quarter. I ended up quitting my job at the University Research Library because I was so sick. I dropped all of my classes but one. I gave up on my doctor. I gave up on calling the exotic chick. By June of 1989, after a school year, I'd only finished three classes. I had to give up on UCLA. I'd never returned to university, so my time in the sun was brief. And yet the intimation of things I'd long dreamed of achieving, only a taste and then they were taken away. I thought I was headed for a career in academia that I'd become an economist. So I watched Mad Max this evening and I remember when I dated great girls and my whole life was ahead of me. I remembered the olive skin number at the University Research Library magazine desk and how she'd given me a phone number intimated she'd give me much more. I haven't stayed in touch with anyone from UCLA that school year of 1988-89. I remember UCLA was briefly ranked number one in the nation for football and some people thought I looked like Troy Aikman who was the UCLA quarterback at the time. 
He was then drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. I spent most of that school year on my sick bed. People thought I was a quitter and they didn't take much notice of me. I wonder what happened to that girl. Did she age gracefully? I've dated 40 year old women who were as attractive as I imagine that this girl is today. But I never got any of these girls in their prime or in my 